it's really withstood uh, a lot of storms and a lot of uh, snowstorms, windstorms, ice storms, and uh, she's still there, so I, I'm knocking on wood, it stays there, you know. So back to you, she comes, VK2 Bravo Alpha India, W8 Hotel Bravo, over. So this is my backyard setup. I come in here and uh, sit under the pergola here and have my uh, Shigu G90 in an ammo can, Harbor Freight ammo can, just sitting there at the ready for me. And uh, plug it into one of the solar panel battery packs I have, which uh, those things are great. They just stay charged, even charged when it's cloudy. I, I haven't had any problems keeping them charged. A 200 watt solar panel. I like to sit out here and listen to the birds and watch the watch the wind and watch the creek. See all kinds of things. It's a nice way to get outside and still play with your radio a little bit. Maybe hunt some poda or something like that. But yeah, it's a great great little setup. It works well. I have no complaints about the Shagu G90. I don't. I, for as far as portable ops, it's kind of a perfect little machine for me. And putting it in the case, it's just made it that more easy to tote around. I have a, this is a cord that I can plug it into a digi rig, and the other part of that cord's in the case. So if I want to do digital modes, I can, um, which is something I do often. I have a little bit mini, uh, B-Link mini PC that I bring with me sometimes and, and do it that way. But yeah, it's just nice to be outside, especially on a, on a warm day in December. Warm, windy day. I'll take it. It's been much cooler lately. This is a nice Saturday. Everything's uh, everything's looking nice out here. Beautiful sunny sky and the leaves are starting to fall down from the trees. I've noticed that uh, that has improved my uh, reception and transmission on uh, 915 megahertz for Meshtastic. So that's that's been a good thing. One thing I need to do soon is I need to um, I need to re I need to lower my my doublet and uh, get the the uh, messenger lines. It's not actually wired. It's, it's, I'm just using paracord. It's got a lot of play in it. We had an ice storm last year, and one of the branches fell, and the wire didn't snap. The paracord didn't snap, but it did pull the sheath off the paracord. And that's something I've just been neglecting to repair. But uh, it's getting to be a nice time of year where I can see through the leaves easily. And it might be time to go out there and fix that up soon. And just inspect the, the wire on the paracord, uh, the wire on the doublet all in all. I've loved that doublet. The doublet runs, um, it can run up to, I think, 900 watts through the uh, MFJ tuner that I have. I have a remote tuner. And I've got that running to the house with uh, some buried uh, RG9BU coax that somebody gave me. It's some ancient stuff, but it works great. And then uh, from the tuner out there, it's going up into the trees through some um, 300 ohm window line and then to the, to the dipole. But I, I, thought my, um, I thought my Chameleon MCOM 3B was impressive when I first got that, but man, that has nothing over the doublet. The reception reports I get everywhere with that are just incredible. Uh, that was told to me by my good friend in Elmer KX0U. He taught me about the, the power of the doublet. I asked him what if he could put up any antenna, what would he put up, and that was his choice. So I decided to build one, and I've been very happy with it. The doublet antenna, also known as an all-band doublet. Uh, I can't remember what else I've heard it called. It's essentially a dipole with... Uh, with uh, balanced feed line instead of coax and it, it certainly helps to have it into a remote tuner it does rely on a tuner to become all band it's not going to be all band without a tuner so you got to have that tuner and having a remote tuner out there uh, just makes it more more efficient in my opinion I think in the opinion of many others so that's what I've been using that's my primary antenna all band doublet it's 110 feet long it's um, fed with 93 feet of uh, 300 ohm line and it's not resonant on 80 meters uh, it was intentionally made to not 
be resonant. And that's uh, how I get away with making it multi-banded. I think if it was like, going to make it um, resonant on 80 meters, I think it was going to be like 130 feet long or some, something in that neighborhood. But if you make it, if you make it not resonant on all bands, you can essentially pull it in on any band just about. I mean, it, it's got some bands that works better on than others. It doesn't do great on uh, 17 meters. It doesn't, it, it'll do it, but it, it, it doesn't love it. And I can't remember what the other ones are, but generally I just stay on 80 meters and 20 meters anyways. So, but I can work them all if I want to with that antenna. It's a great one. Uh, I suggest you check it out. I'll put some links below on uh, how to build one, how the formula that you use to calculate how long it could be and how much window line. You have to avoid odd multiples for the feed line of, uh, I think it's odd multiples of a quarter wavelength because, um, it can cause some, cause some issues there. Anyways, I'll post that below. Well, there's the, there's the middle of my doublet there. And you can see that's the center in, insulator. And you, you can see I, I just used a piece of paracord to suspend it from that tree branch. And that's pretty high up there. I'd say it's a good 30, 35 feet, maybe even 40. But I don't think of any of my antenna installations as permanent because all it takes is one windstorm or ice storm and come and knock them, knock them down. But uh, I'm ready to put them back up. It's easy enough, as I've demonstrated before with the, with the um, slingshot. It's not that hard. So I don't fear, I don't have fear about putting an antenna that I know someday the elements might bring down. I just don't, I'll just put it back up. I, I don't think I'll ever have a perfect antenna situation where I believe it will be there for the rest of my life. Certainly won't be this one, but it's just one of those things you gotta continually improve upon and maintain. But this one has served me well. Ending Bravo, Kilo Charlie 9 Alpha, Kilo Kilo. Blue CQ Contest, K1 Foxtrot, Mexico Sugar. Whiskey Yankee, six Yankee. So at night, when 10 meters is gone, and you lose all that really good 10 meter DX that can happen, and 20 meters can get wonky. It can stay open all night, but it doesn't always do that. I've talked to people in the Indian Ocean before at 10 o'clock at night on 20 meters, and they sounded very, very clear wouldn't say clear as a bell, but very clear. In fact, I did that two nights in a row. I think it was Mars, uh, Seychelles Island over there in the Indian Ocean in between Africa and, and India. But so you're left with a couple options at night. You can go 40 meters for um, single sideband phone. There, there'll be a lot of people on. It's busy band, popular for POTA, parks on the air, and tons of nets. Or you can go to 80 meters, which is really where I like to go. Easy Y here in Denton, Texas, and we're getting loaded up with some trivia questions. And I got some uh, 3916 Family Feud Christmas questions for you tonight. So Pete KE5GGY is the net controller for this trivia net that happens every night at 9 o'clock. And Pete has a background in broadcasting. I think he's been an on-air personality. Uh, he he operates his station out of Denton, Texas, and he does an amazing job of holding this little group together every night. I don't do it every night, but I do it a lot. Sometimes I do it uh, down here in the yard, and I think that's when I enjoy it the most, is when I'm sitting out here in the yard. But, yeah, Pete... Uh, Pete does a great job of running this net and making sure that everybody is able to get in on the uh, on the game. And he listens for weak signals. He doesn't just call on regulars. He loves having new people into the net, which is kind of what the uh, 13, 3916 nets is all about. This net also serves another purpose in that it lets you test your radio. It lets you test your antenna. It lets you test your whole setup to see how well you're hearing 
and how well you're being heard because you will talk to people from all over the country on this net. Uh, 80 meters does take a, a bigger antenna to, uh, to get out. And you gotta have it high, high as you can. Top of the trees work for me. But uh, I find it has a lot less atmospheric noise than 80 meters. You might not get the same distance that you'd get from 40 meters, but that doesn't mean to say you won't occasionally get some DX. In the case of 80 meters, my probably best DX uh, on single sideband was British Columbia. Uh, I, I stumbled into a British Columbia uh, public safety net one night and uh, just checked in, and then everybody wanted to say hi. <laughs> because it was kind of unusual for someone from Oklahoma to be talking to someone as far away as British Columbia on 80 meters. First person on base. Name comes from the Latin word. It means to stretch. It's a lot of the same people every single night. You get to know people. It's kind of one of the fun things about radio is getting to know uh, a couple of voices on the air that you talk to regularly. You check in with them. Hey, Steve, it's ka 6 Hey, what's up, Rimmel? How you doing tonight, man? You're camping. Oh, I'm not camping. I'm just backyarding with the dog out here. We're I'm drinking some hard cider and chilling, man. Well, that's my backyard portable setup. The battery, the Shigu G90, ham in a can, my dog, my solar panels, all that. That's how I do it. That's what I like to do. It's fun. You don't have to spend a ton of money to get on the air. The Shigu G90 is a great first radio, and 20 watts is plenty of power to get you just about anywhere you want to talk to. The important thing is your antenna, but don't put so much thought into your antenna that you never put one up. Put up a simple dipole, or even a truck stop whip antenna, anything. Just start playing with it. See how it works. See when it works. Play around with different bands at different times of day. Just get on the air.